Hello and welcome back to our discussion of index scans in PostgreSQL and relational database systems. All right, so we were facing a challenge here. What to do when we have to index scan a non-clustered index? Do we really have to suffer from the random I.O. pattern that this will incur or can we do something else? And the answer of the most relational database systems out there and PostgreSQL is no exception here is that we need a different technique to scan the index, to scan non-clustered indexes and to avoid the random I.O. pattern that the really uh, messy page reference pattern that is uh, incur incurred there, um, uh, we need to handle that differently. And the answer of PostgreSQL is a pair of operators, a pair of plan operators, the bitmap index scan and its brother operator, the bitmap heap scan. Okay, so in a plan, they would be normally organized like this, all right? So if you recall, we read these plans from the outside, from the inside to the outside. So this is actually the starting point, the bitmap index scan. It's performed on a particular index here, the index C index, but uh, hmm, it's not a clustered index. Index C in our examples has been a non-clustered index, all right? Still, we are performing an index scan, and such an index scan is, of course, guided by an index condition. But what we are going to do now is, uh, instead of uh, dereferencing the read pointers that we find in the sequence set in the leaves of the index, why we perform the index scan, instead of dereferencing these read pointers, we will collect them in a bitmap. In a bitmap that encodes the locations of the heap file that we would access. All right, there is two different versions of this bitmap, as we will see in a minute, a very fine granular uh, version and a version with coarse granularity. The fine granular version will indeed encode the heap locations of individual rows that will match the uh, index condition. In the coarse version, we will um, point to in two pages that contain rows that uh, uh, fulfill the index condition. We will see the consequences of that when we discuss this further. All right, but this is the crucial point. While we scan the index, while we scan the sequence set, we uh, fill the bitmap, we create the bitmap in memory. That's an in-memory data structure, but we do not dereference the reads yet and access the heap file. This, these accesses would lead to random IO. This is exactly what we want to avoid. Once we have built that bitmap, we will pass it on. We will pass it on to the second operator, to the bitmap heap scan. All right. This is indeed an operator that then will access the, uh, the heap file, the actual table, the actual row storage. But only then will this particular step happen. All right. So the bitmap heap scan will use the bitmap. And while it scans the heap file once, this is very important. We only scan the heap file once from left to right. So this will be sequential I.O. We will use the bitmap as a guide that tells us that particular pages contain hits, contain hits with rows that we need to, uh, that we need to retrieve. Right. If the bitmap really is in the fine granularity, granularity mode, then that bitmap will, will even tell us which rows on these pages are the uh, are matches regarding the index condition. If we operate with the coarse version, then uh, we have to be careful. The bitmap will only lead us to the correct pages. We then have to do some more work, a bit more work on the pages to identify the actual index, uh, the actual matching rows. Okay. So this is a pair of operators that communicate via this bitmap. Okay, so we will talk about these exact uh, entries here in the plan and the recheck condition here in a minute once we explore more details of this. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the, the, the fine granular version first where the bitmap in uh, indeed indicates the exact rows, the exact rows that will match the index condition. Okay, so let's follow this two-step process. This would be the first phase of the entire thing, the bitmap index scan. We will, would uh, uh, 
perform a normal descent into this B plus tree. This will lead us into the leaf level to the beginning of the sequence set part that we have to scan and we would scan that part from left to right. So everything business as usual. But when we find such an index entry, we will use is its writ to set a bit to set a bit in this bitmap data structure here. All right, so let me highlight that this is the bitmap data structure that is created by the bitmap index scan. All right, when we find such an index entry during our index scan, we will use it to set the according bit. This bit, this bit represents a single row that is a match regarding the index condition. Okay, so all of these set bits here, uh, all of these set bits uh, represent rows that do match the index condition. Okay, once this bitmap has been constructed and it's an in-memory bitmap, so we need some memory there, some working memory inside our database system. Once this bitmap has been constructed, the job of the bitmap index scan has completed. All right, no heap file access yet. No data heap file access yet. Uh, until this particular point. All right, in the second phase, we will communicate this bitmap to the bitmap heap scan, which will then perform a left to right scan of the bitmap. And in synchrony, it will perform a left to right scan, a single left to right scan of the data heap file, of the tables heap file. All right. And as you can see, it's a sequential, it's a sequential access once through the entire file, a completely different I.O. pattern than the jumbled random I.O. mess that otherwise the non-clustered indexes would leave us with. All right, this is actually a scan that even can skip a particular ranges of pages. You see that these pages, which do not contain any hit at all, any match regarding the index condition, are never being accessed at all. We just skip them during this sequential scan. This is an even more efficient sequential scan than a normal sec scan would give us. All right, you can see that we are guided by the bits inside this bitmap to collect the matching rows. We will detect which, which, which pages are indeed relevant. This would be a relevant page. And the bitmap would indeed tell us that this particular row and this particular row inside the bitmap, the exact row position on the page would be, uh, would be recorded inside the bitmap. And uh, we could use that to directly collect the matching rows from these pages. Okay. So that's the operation if our granularity is the row level bitmap. Okay, as you can imagine, this is an in-memory data structure, but it will take its, uh, its space. So this is one bit for each of the individual rows in the table file. If this is a multi-million um, uh, 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 table here, then there will be a multi-million bit string that we have to construct here. And that might stress our working memory. If working memory is indeed tight, then this might not be an option. And we would maybe change to the uh, option of coarse granularity bitmaps. This would be the page level bitmaps. Okay, so now each bit inside the uh, bit string only represents a page. It does not represent individual rows, okay? This means that the bit string will be sparse. It will be it will consume way less space here. So if you re if you th recall that one a page in a, in a, in a table normally holds on the order of hundred rows, oh, then this is the factor that we save in space when we switch over to this coarse page level bitmap. Probably uh, this bit string will. Uh, be smaller by a factor of 100, 100 or more if compared to the row level bitmap. Okay, so this one bit now represents that there is some row, there is some row on this particular page, there is some row that will match the index condition. Which row? Okay, we have to find out. During this index scan, during this index scan in the second phase, when we use this page level bitmap to guide our sequential scan through the file, we will see that we have to access this particular page. We may skip that page, but we have to access all of these pages. Where the matching rows are located on these, uh, on these uh, pages, 
I don't know. The only way to find out is to visit each row on site inside these pages, the dark gray pages, visit each row, evaluate the index condition and thus find the the matching the matching rows. All right. Still we are able to skip during the sequential scan we are able to skip some of the pages that do not contain any hit whatsoever, but all other pages all other pages um, that may contain one hit or even more hits have to be visited. Okay, everything else actually remains the same. So if the working memory is tight, we might have to switch to the page level bitmap. But this means recheck the index condition. And this explains the recheck condition entry in the explain plan that we have seen before. Okay. Actually, if you look at the reality of the implementation inside PostgreSQL, you will see that PostgreSQL builds a hybrid of this uh, of this uh, bitmap idea. So if working space, working memory is ample, then we will indeed perform uh, the option on this slide, the row level bitmap of very fine granularity. If working memory becomes tight, PostgreSQL switches to a hybrid version in which some locations of the uh, of the bit string encode individual rows, some portions of the bit string encode uh, the page level only. Right. So we will uh, we will um, configure this hybrid mix such that the working memory that we are given is sufficient to hold the bitmap. Let's quickly switch over to the terminal and see whether we can actually find this there. All right, here we are. So um, let's look at the current state of the working memory. This would be a configuration parameter that tells us how much space has been set aside to, uh, to uh, create data structures, temporary data structures that we need while we process queries. And the bitmaps are one such data structure. So let's see. Currently, that's four megabytes. That would be the default configuration, and uh, four megabytes can hold quite a long bit string already. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, let's perform. Let's perform the query on the index table, but uh, use the non-clustered index C index to evaluate this particular index condition. All right. So this table is currently clustered uh, according to the A column, not the C column. This will lead to the evaluation of a predicate over a non-clustered index. We expect bitmap heap scan and bitmap index scan pair. Okay, and that's what we see here. Okay, so this is the bitmap index scan and the bitmap heap scan pair that we've expected. Okay, so while we scan the index C index, the non-clustered index, we indeed find 3,531 hits here. All right, uh, but we need to create a bitmap. We need to create a bitmap. In this case, uh, it's indeed an exact bitmap, as you can see here. And indeed, a row-level bitmap has been created that will guide this bitmap peep scan through our sequential scan of the index table. All right, so the working memory of four megabytes has been sufficient to indeed construct an exact row level bitmap. This exact here tells us, hey, we have indeed constructed a row level bitmap. Okay, so this exact row level bitmap is communicated from bitmap index scan to bitmap peep scan, which then uses is during the sequential scan of the index table. You see that the explain plan very unfortunately lists the recheck condition here, but it's not needed. It's really not needed. We are performing uh, a row level bitmap scan. We don't need the recheck condition here. I think the developers of PostgreSQL should indeed consider to remove this uh, output here in the explain plan. I think it's misleading. All right. Okay, so now let's uh, be mean to the system and uh, restrict its working memory to a mere 64 kilobytes. Okay, so this is indeed the minimum working memory that I can assign here. And I will reconfigure it on the fly. This is a parameter uh, that we can uh, reconfigure while the system is running. No need to restart the PostgreSQL server. I will also disable the normal index scan just for good measure so that we stay in the realm of using bitmap index and heap scans here. So let's do that. This has been very mean. Okay. 
happened. So now let's see what's happening for this this uh, uh, identical query now. All right. Took a bit more time to execute. All right. It's still an bitmap index scan and it will still construct a bitmap. But as you can see here in the output, this is a hybrid bitmap that uh, encodes some of the matches exactly in the row level fashion, in the fine granular row level fashion, 880 um, such entries. But uh, some, of the, some of the entries are indeed lossy and this is the coarse granularity page level bitmap. Okay, so uh, when we communicate this bitmap to the bitmap heap scan, some of the bits indicate uh, that uh, pages, entire pages inside the index table may contain hits regarding our index condition. And uh, well, we are left with the task to indeed perform the recheck condition. Now you can see that this output indeed makes sense. We can see that the index recheck or the recheck condition indeed identified quite a number of rows on the uh, on the pages that our sequential scan had to visit that did not fulfill the index condition and thus had to be removed. All right, so that's what we can see here. It's indeed a bitmap heap scan that is performing over a coarse granularity bitmap, at least parts of that. All right, so let's uh, let's switch back to the default configuration, reset the working memory, also enable the normal index scan again. So that would be the story regarding our bitmap heap scans. Okay, uh, perfect. So we are almost done with this portion of our discussion of B-plus trees and how index scans are performed. Let's uh, spend the next video a bit more on the notion of clustering and uh, the consequences for query processing before we turn then to the dynamic nature of B plus trees and how they behave once elements are inserted and deleted, how they keep their balance and the occupancy of nodes and so on. All right, so that's a glimpse into the future videos. For now, we're done with this video. Thanks for watching and listening. I hope to see you soon. Bye.